Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. She's actually getting stuff ready for Easter uh, tomorrow. And happy Easter to those of you who, who celebrate uh, Easter. So this weekend's going to be pretty chill, I think. Uh, not a whole lot going on. Uh, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the situation here with Square Enix, though. I had missed this. Uh, the president, Yosuke Matsuda, I believe it's pronounced, believes that if Japanese developers imitate Western games, they're not going to produce good games. Uh, this is coming from Bounding in the Comics, Ryan Pearson, and we're going to talk about this. Uh, totally missed this this interview. I guess it was yesterday, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's true. I think that you know it seems like. Lately, the Japanese developers have been kind of taking a cue from Western game developers, these AAA titles that unfortunately, you know, tend to to uh, have a lot of wokeness uh, in them. And uh, we've seen a lot of censorship, especially from Sony. There was talk of Square Enix actually having a committee to review whether or not, you know, uh, Tifa's boobs were too big and some other other issues. And, and there has actually been some favorable chatter from Square Enix about games like The Last of Us Part Two. So people were concerned that Square was uh, going to go down the Sony path and uh, make make uh, woke Western AAA titles, right? But that does not seem to be the case. It seems like they're, they're sort of looking at the situation like, you know, if everybody's doing Western games and there's nothing unique, uh, coming out of Japan anymore. I mean, personally, I would, I would love to see Square Enix go back to making a bunch of new IP and making a bunch of new games instead of just constantly rehashing Final Fantasy games or making constant uh, Kingdom Hearts spinoffs and sequels. You know, uh, God, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll talk we'll talk about this situation before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And rants, guys, uh, over 263,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. And yeah, let's let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about this. Square Enix president Yosuke, Yosuke Matsuda believes if Japanese developers imitate Western games, they will not be able to produce good ones. Now, this was in an interview uh, with Yahoo Japan uh, a day or two ago. And, um, yeah, they're talking mostly about, uh, kingdom hearts. Now we actually had people were like, where did it go? We actually had a video up, uh, talking about the backlash toward, uh, kingdom hearts fours art style being a more realistic art style. We said in the video that we thought this would probably be just one world. And we riffed on kingdom hearts fans. Unfortunately, we also mentioned that our daughter is named after a kingdom hearts character. Um, and uh, we got some weird ass comments and weird ass DMs, so we took the took the video down. Uh, I, but we stand by our opinions. I just want to be very clear. We didn't take it down because we were getting ratioed or anything like that. Actually, the video had a, a lot of uh, upvotes. Uh, again, these were not our initial reactions necessarily; they were other people's reactions. But uh, there were some weird comments getting made about uh, our kids, and I'm like, yeah, okay, fuck this. I'm not even gonna. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there with the Kingdom Hearts stand crowd. We got enough shit to deal with. So what the hell? Anyway, uh, let's talk about this. Cause I think that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, Square Enix, uh, possibly bending the knee to the woke crowd and, and they do chase the Western audience more so than they used to. It used to be like, they were going to make their games. If, if you wanted to, to, uh, bring them out over here in the U S you know, we had, uh, Squaresoft US and, uh, you know, some of the games would come out and some of them wouldn't. And now they're looking at, uh, the situation globally and they're like, well, we got to bring all these games out, uh, to the West because money, you know, we have to do that. But I think they've been taking some bad advice, not just Square Enix, but some other Japanese developers, I think have been taking some bad advice. I mean, it's pretty bad with PlayStation in Japan. I guess the, uh, the brand is damaged. There have been a lot of articles about that. And, uh, you know, they shut down their Japanese studio or the, the ones who they were producing games just for Japanese audiences because now they want to cater to uh, a global audience. And Square Enix's uh, headquarters is in California, uh, at least the U.S. branch is in California. And it's pretty close to LAX because we always would uh, well, drive by it after um, flying in and out of uh, LAX. But anyway, here. Uh, speaking to the current state of video gaming, Square Enix president Yosuke Matsuda says he's of the opinion 
that even if Japanese, the Japanese imitate Western games, they will not be able to produce good ones. Uh, Matsuda shared his thoughts on the topic during an interview with Yahoo Japan, published on April 15th, and centered, uh, centered around discussion of Square Enix's future prospects in light of gaming's continued growth, beginning with a brief nod to how important gaming is to some. Uh, I believe that playing is a sign uh, that one is a person, <laughs> he said in an interview. Uh, as it is said that people are creatures of play, homo ludens, and without entertainment, I believe the mind would die. It sounds like that sounds like a line from a Final Fantasy game. Without play, the mind will die. Uh, continuing, Matsuda asserted his view that a game creator being dedicated to their vision affords any given title the highest probability of success as that passion would resonate with like-minded players. So please, please, please don't just keep reiterating the same Final Fantasy games over and over and over again. Our job is to continue to innovate the fun and entertainment. So what is interesting? If we knew this, we would probably have no trouble. In the case of games, I think that if the creator has strong beliefs and persistence, there's a high probability the game will succeed. Um, something is being lost in the translation here. I'm sure that somewhere out there, there are like-minded people who share the same belief as creators who empathize with each other. And now when someone says this is interesting, the reputation spreads around the world as soon as people start to say, I'm a master of this game. Turning to how his role as president is involved in games development, Matsuda told Yahoo he believed in taking a hands-off approach to his employees' work, comparing being involved in the production of a game from the position of president to waiting for a dish to be cooked. Uh, Rakakuni. It's Rakakuni. No, seriously, side, side note, everything, everywhere, all at once. If you haven't seen this movie and you probably haven't because it's in limited release, definitely, definitely check it out. Rakakuni. <laughs> if you intervene too much while the development team is hard at work because you are worried it will not go well. Well, good luck with that with Disney. Uh, you should not open the lid of the pot too many times or peek into the pot without permission just because you're concerned. So we think it's important to patiently wait for the developer who's the cook to make the food. Good luck with that. Good luck with that in the internet. He added, good or bad cooking conditions can be seen in the facial expressions and words of the members of the team. In fact, we can often tell by talking to them in person. Uh, we can only guess from the atmosphere. Basically, are they excited about the game they're working on or not? Are they excited or not? Uh, turning to the topic of the video game market itself, Matsuda observed, nowadays the game market has become globalized noting the domestic Japanese market used to be large and now it is spoiled next to the China and the U S next to China and the U S. So basically it's, it's not as big as it used to be. It used to be that Japan was ground zero for all video game culture and uh, the U S and China are definitely muscling into their turf. If you're not recognized globally, you cannot do business. He bluntly stated Matsuda warned that despite this new potential for developers to reach audiences across the globe, any attempt to appeal to a particular demographic by emulating their style would ultimately result in failure. Explain Genshin Impact, but uh, <laughs> I digress. Interestingly, even if the Japanese imitate Western games, they will not be able to produce good ones. The drawings of monsters and the visuals and audio effects are all somewhat Japanese. And players around the world know that a given element is what makes Japanese games good. Overseas markets are important, but it's not enough to develop for them. So we're not going to pander to you. They, they've said that, but then, you know, it is sort of a, a mix, right? Uh, despite the generally positive outlook of Mitsuna's comments, they appear to stand in direct contrast to some of Square's previous actions. Yeah, uh, their notorious ethics department itself having regained recent infamy thanks to a new job listing. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. They're going to have an uh, ethics department job listing confirms focus on discriminatory, prejudicial, or offensive content. We're going to get rid of it. I have to wonder if that wasn't a reaction to Activision Blizzard. Um, it would suggest the company is more than content with Japanese games being modified for foreign sensibilities and matching age rating boards, uh, even if it would alter the original creator's vision and alienate the aforementioned like-minded fans. We've caught many, uh, many things being changed for Western audiences, even in re-releases. I mean, some surprising changes. I mean, not, nothing that breaks the game, obviously, but but like Final Fantasy VIII, when they re-released that, remastered that, there were some things that was like, what the hell? Like, this was fine in 1999. Why is it, why is it a problem now? 
Another contradiction can be seen how Square is currently themselves tasking their own subsidiary, Luminous Productions, a Japanese developer through and through, with developing Western-style games like Forsaken. Um, yeah, this looks like a Western-style game. The game's aesthetic and mechanics will bear the Japanese flair mentioned by Masuda. The story will be penned by Western writers. Uh, combined with the president's admission that the company does not develop games with Western audiences in mind, Forspoken, I guess I got that wrong. It's Forspoken, not Forsaken. Forspoken is Square's attempt to find the development sweep spot between creating games that are totally jarring imitations of different styles or sticking wholesale to their own identity. Yeah, and they've they've changed a lot of things. I mean, weren't they weren't they voting on Tifa's boobs? Like, you know, we can't we can't make Tifa's boobs bounce anymore because California might find it offensive. And I think that's that's you know probably back to Square Enix's U.S. headquarters in California. You're dealing with California sensibilities, and um, you know I don't know. I mean, I'm not as big of a Square fan as I used to be. I tried playing through Final Fantasy VII remake, and I, I just got bored. I'm like, this is this is basically Final Fantasy 16 with a, a coat of Final Fantasy 7 paint. Um, you know, and and how many years is it gonna take to get this game completed? You know, and they're they're obviously gonna deviate from the original storyline. Uh, you know, they've made that very clear. So I don't, I don't think I really care. I don't think I really care like I used to. I would like the the old Squaresoft back, please. That would be amazing if if we had the old Squaresoft back, and I would like Vagrant Story to be re-released at some point, and Threads of Fate. Please. We got Chrono Cross. You know, I never thought I'd see a re-release of Chrono Cross, so there we go. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, pretty interesting to see them sort of saying, hey, we're not going to bend the knee to... We're not going to bend the knee to Western audiences, but yeah, their actions actually show that they kind of are. So, you know, money talks. At the end of the day, money talks, and if pandering to... Western audiences doesn't make money, then these Japanese studios will stop doing that. But again, you know, PlayStation's kind of a dead brand in Japan. Um, a lot of Japanese gamers are on the Switch. They're moving to mobile. They're moving to PC. Uh, you know, so I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a lot of factors here. But I mean, one thing is for certain, uh, Square Enix is not what it used to be. And uh, even if their games are AAA titles, making tons and tons of money, I don't think you're going to see the kind of innovation that they had uh, years ago. And I don't, I don't think they're going to be allowed to do it. I think if you're going to get really cool, innovative Japanese flavored games, it's not going to come from Square Enix anymore. I mean, they're going to give us the Avengers, <laughs> you know, and that's that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. And we'll talk later.